What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today uh, we're actually at Locals. We just finished the Cyax sneak peek, uh, Cyberstorm access. And if you guys don't know, Dino Morphe got some really powerful support. It got a counter trap, it's essentially a Solemn Strike for the deck. And that's kind of insane because Solemn Strike has always really been really powerful, but it's just hard to play in this because you want to half your life points all the time. I'll get into that when we get into the deck profile. But if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. And uh, just before we get into it, one last thing, this deck is built to be post Cyax. So some of the card choices are here because they're built to beat stuff like purely super heavy samurai, etc, etc, right? So uh, let's get right into it. We're playing three Theresia, of course, as well as uh, two Diplos. I'm pretty sure this is just standard. Everyone knows these. Th there's not much to explain. This card's insane now because if you open a fusion... Okay, so actually, let me get, let me get into the engine and I'll break down the engine, right? So here's the engine. Three, two, three Frenzy, three Domain, uh, two of the brand new Intact, one Sonic, and one Alert. Okay, so this is the engine now, um, and I'm going to break it down. So because you're maxing out on your fusion traps, essentially, like, before, because the traps weren't, like, I guess, insane uh, what ends up happening is you would always like double up on a fusion with Theresia because that was just like the best one to get right but now you actually don't need to do that anymore because I like as soon as you get to one of the fusions you have your full combo set up right so we have the brand new card over here uh, Dynamorphia Intact which is a new card that you can set now off of Theresia and it gives you other forms of disruption which this deck didn't really have this deck isn't being played as a uh, floodgate deck because uh, you don't want to lose evenly you don't want to lose any of those back or hate uh, you really want to play it as a mid-range deck right and what this does for you is it's just pay half your life points and it's a solemn strike that's basically what it is and that's the most important part about it so now not only are you setting up like your rex drum but you're also setting up like this so like even if you can't get into a rex drum even if you're stuck under theresia one of these gets ashed like it is what it is and then this has that other form of protection and it synergizes of course because it pays half your life points and on top of that it's a counter trap which is really good because if you guys don't know the secondary effects of all these cards the regular traps uh, protect you from burn damage but these protect you from battle damage which is really really important because you always have your life points and you don't want to just lose to your opponent attacking over you the only downside with this card is that you need to control a dynamorphia card to activate it and that kind of can be troublesome which is why we're not playing it at three but i think it's perfectly fine at two i don't think you need it more you search it when you need it when you don't open a fusion right so that's it for the dynamorphia stuff i think this is really consistent i think it's really powerful i i kind of want to play a third one of this but i just found that you don't need it and the reason you don't need a third one usually you would but i really like three fenrir in the main deck there's really no reason to play three fenrir other than that it's a really good card to start your turn you special summon your fenrir going second you're able to summon it you can do some uh not damage but in the you can do battle phase tricks with this obviously banishing your opponent's cards and whatnot so this card becomes really powerful in that sense and it's just a really nice card that you can uh deck thin with as well because if you start your turn with a fenrir you start your fenrir yes the second fenrir is going to be kind of dead but you're just getting more cards out of your deck so i really like fenrir it helps you also push for game and do more damage and then we're playing uh, a lot of consistency pieces we're playing three fossil dig three prosperity mm -hmm. you, you need these you need to get to them as soon as possible as fast as possible um, if you open your theresia fossil dig gets you into like a second one for follow-up potentially but it makes it so that like your pros now can search you for traps or hand traps and stuff which is really really important so uh yeah you need as much consistency as possibly of course so three or six cards i should say for consistency i think is very uh relevant and very yeah, necessary then we're playing two cross out of one called by now this is something that I know people have talked to me about and they're like, why are you playing Crossout? Crossout is really bad. Um, this deck folds if you get Ash. Like it folds if you get Ash. So you really need the Crossout. And going into this format, Super Heavy Samurai can play like 15 hand traps, right? They can play Drool, Ash. They can't play Imperm, um, but Ogre, Veiler, all that kind of stuff. And uh, because so many people are going to be running around with so many different hand traps, I think Crossout is just really, really powerful. And again, you can cross out like generic cards like Prosperity and just other cards that your opponent might just be playing anyway. So I think Crossout generically is really good, but you definitely need um, the Call by the Call. Like, I 100% I think you need all three of these. So that's it for that. And then we're actually playing a lot of hand traps ourselves. So we are going into a hand trap format and we do want to be prepared for it. So we're playing three Ash, three Droll, uh, three Imperm. These I think are going to be some of the best hand traps in the format. Ogre is going to be pretty good as well But instead of Ogre So I'm going to say this You have two different things you can do here You can either play 12 hand traps We're at 9 right now You can play 12 Or what I did was I played 3 Gamma Seal I think Gamma Seal is insane in the main deck And it just makes so much sense Purely Like you need an out for Purely You need an out for so many different decks now That are going to be putting up boss monsters I think Dragon Link puts up Chaos Hunter or Not Chaos Hunter Chaos Angel I think is what it's called um, Which I think is a kind of Has like a kind of like powers effect and there's just so many cards that going second this deck 
has a tough time breaking so you need a card that breaks boards right and so that's what gamma does for you literally any problematic monster your opponent puts on the board you have that gamma seal for it so again this could be another hand trap if you think you know ogre or bell and stuff and i definitely recommend like siding it which i'll show you guys a side deck also for the main deck i really like these because when you're forced to go second it's fine or it's, it's really powerful and then lastly i'm just playing one harpies i'm at 39 so this was the 40th card in the deck and i, I think it's really powerful as well now another thing if you guys really dislike the cross out i really like the cross out but if you guys really dislike the cross out you can side these or yeah put these in the side deck or just remove these inside this and then play more hand traps like you guys can do that as well that just becomes too aggressive in my opinion and you just lose to when you get ash so yeah and you don't want that to happen so i, I want to give you guys options but that's it for the main deck it's 40 cards in the main deck and just like super consistent and playing the hand trap means playing the hand traps means that you're not losing to harpies you're not losing to lightning storm you're not losing to evenly you you're really ending on a single floodgate which is your rex drum and then if you have like an impact set as well like that's all the disruption you need um, and then the rest of your stuff should be hand traps right so let's get into the extra deck here though before we go into the side deck we are starting off with three rex drum uh, okay, this is pretty self explanatory right? I'm not even going to explain this. Three Rexstrom, three Cat, three self uh, At the moment, Kashtara is still a thing. The ban list is not out yet. So you need to be playing all of these. You don't want to get them like gone this is your boss monster of the deck of course so yeah you don't want to get these hit by kashtar you're playing multiples then uh you're playing two dolka these are just utility cards dolka logia um baguska and zeus uh this is actually really nice because a lot of the time if you're playing against kashtar what they'll do is they'll just hit the zeus like when they extra deck banish they'll hit the zeus because they're like oh i'm scared of zeus it's like okay i, I did't want to go into that anyways so it's, it's kind of like bait for kashtar um but it's also really good in general because if you end up on baguska like this is really good into bestial which i completely forgot to mention uh brand Branded Bestial is going to be very powerful, especially with all the new support. So you can sometimes try to get into this before these. Like this might be even better. And then like, you know, if you're trying to play them out slowly, you can go Baguska, attack later, like turn two, turn three, whatever, make Zeus on top. So uh, utility cards, uh, more utility cards that I thought were really good are Baron and Pep. Uh, Psychic and Punisher, of course, we all know any hand trap like Ash, Ogre, um, Bell, whatever, with your level eight Rexstrom can make this and you can go for a game. Um, and then you have Fenrir as well. So Fenrir plus any three is a Baron. So more utility cards that you can play. You don't have to necessarily. They're not mandatory in the deck, but uh, they're definitely very powerful cards. Uh, so that's it for the extra deck. It, not too much change from like last format, but for the side deck here, we're playing three evenly. I don't know if I want to be play playing this or if I want to play something else a little bit more um, generic. Uh, I kind of want to play Lightning Storm. I kind of want to play Raigeki. I just find that there's so many different things that this is good into. But at the same time, I feel like there's so many times where like you just don't side it in. I don't know. It's, it sounds weird, but like through playing, the card's good and it's bad and it's amazing. And it's like, I don't want to side it, but it's also so good. So this could be any three cards, any three board breakers. I definitely recommend playing more board breakers. I think even these quote unquote the best one. I'm playing three Bell and three Ogre. So this is what I was talking about in the main deck. You can definitely fit one of these in the main deck if you want to cut the cross outs. I'm just siding them. Uh, this is only really good. It's, it's not bad into branded, but it's only really good into Math Max, and that's the main purpose of it. I'm trying to think of other decks that it's good into. This Math Max is the main one. Ogre is also really powerful. So um, just more hand traps that you guys can play for depending on what the what the deck you're playing up against is, right? So you can swap out different hand traps. Like for example, if for some really reason, like I think Droll is the best hand trap in the game right now, but if for some reason Droll is not good into a deck, you just side the Drolls out for one of these, right? So uh, that's why I'm playing the Ogres. And then uh, before I get into my spicy little tech here, because I, I have something really spicy I want to show you guys, but before we get into that, uh, we're playing three Judgment for going first, of course. When you're going first, um, you know your opponent's going to be siding back row hate, and this is a card that protects you from that. Now, this is the spice that's good into super heavy it's good into purely it's one of those cards that yes it's kind of quote unquote easily outed but at the same time if you just set it up with your board like it's insane and that card right here is power filter now what is oh, this card sorry, i was gonna troll a little bit and not actually show it but oh well show it because this card is spicy so power filter this card is insane so for anyone who didn't play in zoo format especially when zoo originally came out this card was a tech that people played uh but zoo can play a lot of like back row hate right because they're not locked out of playing spells and traps whereas you know what deck is super heavy samurai yeah so this card just so you guys can read so it says neither player can special summon monsters with a thousand or less attack so it was really good into zoo format but why is it good now Super Heavy has a few monsters with the, with a thousand or less attacks, so they can't special summon them, which means they can't go their combos. So it's really good into Super Heavy, and your opponent has to specifically side in Archfiend Eccentric for this. But it, but then again, it's like okay, if they have to side uh, Archfiend Eccentric for the single power filter, they're not getting rid of any of your other back row. And this deck, of course, if you're putting up three, four, five back row, um, you're not necessarily putting up five. You're usually putting up like three is kind of what you're at. But one Archfiend Eccentric outing this is one thing, um, but it's also really good against Purely, which is really powerful. So this card is something I'm testing right now. 
now. I think it's so spicy. Um, I think this card is like low-key insane. I, I think you guys should get them also before they go up in price because this might be something people are going to be trying to side in. Um, especially in a deck like this one because all your extra deck monsters, nothing is a thousand or less. So you're never going to actually, this is never going to lock you out. So that's a really nice thing about it. So again, that's just my tech. Um, I really like that it shows Ojamas in it because I'm a GX guy and I like the Ojamas. Anyways, try this out for yourselves though. Uh, but again, this is just uh, my theory for post Sayak. Of course, depending on what the ban list is looking like, you're going to change it up. If the ban list completely hits cash, you can change certain things up. If it hits math mech, you know, maybe Bell's not as important. So it all kind of depends on the, uh, on the ban list. But at the moment, I think this deck's pretty good and it's built for post Sayak and it's built to beat all the meta decks in the format. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you, Alpha, for filming. I appreciate you like always um, make sure to try this deck out for yourselves because this deck I, I think is really really powerful and it's something that I'm not gonna give up I'm gonna make this deck good and I think it already is good and I think it just got better with Sayak so thank you guys all for watching make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already and with that Spanko and Alpha signing out peace